the of the whole family. And again, the same marriage. And then this whole of the Steve Lover family. Is taken from St. Paul's early Colossians, chapter 3. <laughs> Brethren, put me on, therefore, as elect of God, holy and beloved, the bowels of mercy, benignity, humility, modesty, patience, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If any have a complaint against another, even as the Lord hath forgiven you, so do you also. But of all these things have charity, which is the bond of perfection. Let the peace of Christ rejoice in your heart, wherein also you are called in one body. And be ye thankful that the word of Christ dwell in you abundantly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another, in psalms, hymns, and spiritual canticles, singing and grace in your hearts to God. All whatsoever you do in word or in work, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father, by Jesus Christ our Lord. In the Gospel, St. Luke chapter 2. When Jesus was 12 years old, they going up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast, and having fulfilled the days when they returned, the child Jesus remained in Jerusalem, and his parents knew it not. And thinking that he was in the company, they came a day's journey and sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances. Not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his wisdom and his answers. And seeing him, they wondered. And his mother said to him, Son, why hast thou done so to us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrow. And he said to them, how is it that you sought me? Do you not know that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the word that he spoke to them, unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. And his mother kept all these words in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and grace with God and men. Let's go to the words of the day. Holy God. <laughs> So today, in consideration of the Holy Family, we consider the raising of two children. One was our Lord Jesus Christ, the circumstances of his childhood, and the other one, the other Savior of the Jews, who was brought out of water named Moses. And remember there's a similarity of the circumstances of their childhood. Moses was raised in very similar circumstances that our Lord Jesus Christ was raised in when he was called to come and save the Jewish people. It was a prophecy that there would become a savior who would take the Jews out of Egypt. Egypt, of course, the land which they went into under Joseph in that time in a time of famine. But then Egypt turned against the Jews. And the Egyptian pharaohs began to persecute them and turn them into slaves. So originally, when Joseph was in Egypt with the Jews, they were greatly praised and they were loved by the good Pharaoh, and they had a proper place in the kingdom of Egypt. And for a brief time, God ruled in Egypt. But the Egyptians then returned to their wicked ways, returned to their satanic ways. And then after 400 years, it was extremely evil and malicious. They had all forgotten about the time of Joseph. They may have forgotten about how Joseph had saved them. And the Jews came in glory into Egypt. No one remembered those days. And they hated the Jews. And they were complete slaves. And then there was a prophecy that that slavery would come to an end. The slavery would come to an end, and God would raise up a Savior who would bring them. And there would be some sign in the heavens. 
You all remember the sign. There was a sign that would come. And the sign came. And all say that we now the Savior is born. And therefore the Pharaoh of Egypt heard the prophecy that the Savior was born. And he commanded that every male child should be put to death. And there was a warning that came to the mother of Moses. The child was put to death. So she made a wicker basket. Put oil on the basket so that it would not sink. And she put her child into that basket. And he was brought down the, the water of Nile. And he asked, he asked his older sister to follow the basket, to see where it would go. And while all the children were being killed, the Jewish children were being killed in the land of Jesse, the boys, this child was floating down the basket. And he was floating into the heart of the most wicked land, where he was picked up by the daughter of the Pharaoh, who had no children. He picked up the daughter of the Pharaoh, and she called him Moses, because she drew him out of the water. She saw this child, and his child, she wanted a child, and she drew the child out of the water, and then she raised the child. And the child, they, when the, she would ask that, the, the, to find someone to take care of the child. And the daughter, the sister of Moses, went, uh, uh, Miriam went to, to the Pharaoh and said, I know a woman who can nurse the child. There is a woman that I know that can nurse this child. And so they said, well, I, I cannot nurse the child, so get the woman and she can nurse the child. And so, and so that the mother of Moses nursed the child when the, uh, in the house of Pharaoh. And she watched her child grow in the house of Pharaoh. And the child lived and was raised amongst the Egyptians when all of his fellow Jews were put to death. When we consider the raising of Moses, he was raised in the most wicked circumstances. He was raised in the most wicked world. And he was raised in a very, very bad time. We can see, for instance, right now, in fact, since Vatican II, and as each of the great events of the last 60 years has happened, each event has shown us we're getting into worse and worse times. Now, for instance, with the coronavirus spreading, this virus it doesn't really, it's not a pandemic, it doesn't really exist, and the lies that are spread about it, that there is a virus that can harm people like any other virus, but there is no pandemic, and it's being used as a great tool to make the world under the government of Satan. The whole world is turned into the land of Egypt. And there are many questions that come to some, many souls. Can you have a family? Can you raise a Catholic child? Can there be a saint raised in our age? Moses was raised in the most difficult and worst possible circumstances that there could be. Not only was he raised in the land of Egypt, but he was raised by the one who gave the decree to murder all the Jews, put them to death. And he was protected by the stalker. And he was raised in that land of Egypt. And he had to go to school with the Egyptians. And he had to be raised in difficult circumstances, but he did not choose those circumstances. There are many, many souls who have sent their children, for instance, a hundred years ago, in the United States of America, 140 years ago, the Council of Baltimore, it was decreed for the United States of America that any parent put their children in public school, they were excommunicated. It was excommunication only for our country. Other countries did not have this excommunication. They were excommunicated and put their children in public schools, but we refused sacraments, and the priests were instructed to go to visit the families. Your children must be in our Catholic school. Why are your children in the public school? Your children are in the public school. Why are they there? You put your children in the public school, they're going to lose their faith. And hundreds of thousands and several million Catholics lost the Catholic faith in the 1800s. Several million of them did. Because they were put in Protestant schools. They were separated from the church. They decided they didn't need they to put their kids in the Catholic schools. They were put in, in, in public schools, and it was a great loss of faith. So the Catholic bishops of America 
added that the bishop has a right to add excommunication. Not only does the pope excommunicate, but the bishop has a power to excommunicate, and they added the excommunication. You must put your children in Catholic schools. You must raise your children in Catholic schools. You cannot put your children in pagan schools. And so many lost the faith. Because of the circumstances of that time, they chose to be put in a difficult circumstance. They chose to put their children away from God. And many, many lost the faith. Now we come forward to the time of Moses. Now can you put your children in a Catholic school? You cannot. The Catholic schools are not Catholic anymore. They're worse than the public schools. And the public schools are very evil. Children have to be homeschooled in our times. You have to think the children and you have to homeschool them. Because you cannot put them in the public schools, in the Catholic schools they will lose their faith. There is a great being pulled away from God happening all around us. And the circumstances are not the same as they were before. They're worse. But then there are some souls who are like in the state of Moses. There are some souls in which they have no way of even homeschooling. Because it's truly impossible for them. It's truly impossible. If it's not truly impossible, you must homeschool your children. It's truly impossible to homeschool them. They really, for some, for some legitimate reason, cannot do it. Can they still raise their children Catholic? Can they still keep their children in the faith? And here we go back to the time of Moses. Moses was raised outside of his family, and his family had very little influence upon him. They were not able to influence him like they wanted to. Why? Because of the fact of the persecution of the Egyptians. And Moses had to go down the river. And he ended up in the land of Egypt. And, then, and Miriam, his little sister, and his mother had to quietly and secretly teach him the faith. They taught him the faith quietly and secretly. And they couldn't even let him know. That let him know publicly that they were his own sister and his own uh, mother. But they, but they took care of him only from a distance. They weren't able to be with him all the time. They weren't able to connect with him all the time. But the child was alive, and he was raised in Egypt, and he saw the land of Egypt, and he saw the ways of Egypt. And then when the time came, God inspired him to go and change his life. And then he was still able to save the Jewish people. Raised in the most difficult and worst possible circumstances, there still came a Moses. So then you come forward 1,600 years and look at the situation of the Lord Jesus Christ, who was raised in the most holy of families, who was raised in the perfect father, a foster father, St. Joseph, who had never had a single imperfection of venial sin in his life, who was the greatest of all the saints in the of the church, raised by the mother of God. The most blessed Virgin Mary was conceived immaculate and would increase in grace every moment of her life. We would think that the life of Moses, which had such danger fraught in it, and such difficulty, was one extreme. But on the other extreme, we should find the life of Jesus Christ, a child, raised by the most wonderful of fathers, foster fathers, virginal father, St. Jerome says. Raised by the most wonderful virginal father, raised by the most wonderful virginal mother, in the most magnificent of all families, that his circumstances must have been so much better. But consider this child. What happened to him when he was a little baby? There was a home that he was supposed to be raised in, but he would not see it. It would be taken by another. There was a land that was his homeland, but for the first seven years of his life, he would not see that homeland. And the only way he would know that land, it was a land where they tried to kill him. So the little baby is only a few weeks old. The little baby is only a couple of months old. And the decree comes. The child must be put to death. By whom? By the king in charge in Israel. By the king of the Jews. Not by the pagan overlords. Not by the Romans, but by the king of the Jews. And his soldiers came. Jewish soldiers, not Roman soldiers, who were in that land also, came to put him to death, and he had to flee. And where did he flee? To the land of Egypt. He had to flee to the land of Egypt. And the child had danger in his childhood. And the child had to flee his own homeland. 
And the child was not able to be raised in his own house. And this child is the Savior of the world. Can there be the rearing of children to be saints in any circumstance? Should there always be children? Many, many souls say, in fact, I heard a caprice in the Society of St. Pius X. And they know very well. And that one should not have children if they're not going to be raised as Catholic children. Not going to be raised as saints. God wants children. And he knows how to make any child into a saint. Every single child that was our ancestors, those of us that are not pure Jews, so 99.9% .9 of people on earth, any of us that were not Jews, every single one of us, we were, our ancestors were raised enemies of God. They were born in pagan families. We were raised in Northern Europe a few thousand years ago. Our grandmothers used to be roasted on ships when daddy died. They really mourned when daddy died. Because they would be roasted on the ship next to him when he would be when he would die. They were, they were raised in very evil, wicked circumstances. But they had children. And what happened to these children? One day missionaries came. They came to these children raised in families in unholy circumstances. Like Moses, raised in unholy circumstances. And the grace of God came to those children, and they were turned into our Catholic ancestors. And they became saints. 99% of the saints of the church, they come from Gentile families. Only a few are actually Jews, like the twelve apostles themselves. But the vast majority of saints do not come from Jewish families. They are not the children of Abraham. They are the children of those who were raised somewhere back in history in terrible circumstances, in families that were living in pagan societies, and even trained great wickedness and paganism. But here we must understand, the grace of God is more powerful than satanic Hollywood. The grace of God is more powerful than the satanic government. And it's more powerful than all the plans of the Antichrist and the destruction of the modern school system of the human mind. It is more powerful than anything Satan can throw at the Catholic family and even at the pagan family. The grace of God is more powerful. He can take a child raised in the most difficult circumstances, raised away from his own home, raised away from his own family, Raised separated by the leaders of Egypt, which means the leaders of the satanic world. The grace of God can enter into those families, and the grace of God can bring about the salvation of that soul, and not only the salvation of that soul, but saints. If it was true that children raised in non Catholic families, and children raised in bad Catholic families, if they were, at, were to be great servants of Satan, devil would not promote abortion. He would be the last one to promote abortion. Because 99% of children born, 100% of children uh, who, who, uh, who are going to be aborted are all aborted by bad families. Good mothers don't abort their babies. Good mothers don't abort their babies. Only mothers who are infected by sin abort their babies. And therefore, Satan would want those mothers who are really to abort their babies to have babies so that they can have more service in the kingdom of Satan. But Satan knows the grace of God in, in enters into every family, including the most wicked families. And the grace of God can draw a Moses out of water. The word Moses means drawn out of water. And what is water? Water is a symbol of sin. Water drowns us. Water destroys us. It was water that killed all people on earth except those inside the ark, eight people. Water destroyed them all. But what's the problem? I have drawn out of water. There is Moses. There will be a son drawn out of water. 
He shall have as a family God as his father, the Blessed Virgin Mary as his mother. Those raised in difficult circumstances, those raised in broken families, those raised even without a father or a mother, they can still be part of a holy family. Moses still received grace. He still received the truth. And Moses, remember, he did not obey. He did not listen. He knew that he was a Jew. He knew that all of his people of the same age were put to death. He knew that he should follow the true religion. But he liked the land of Egypt. He liked the Egyptian ways. But then his hot temper got the best of him one day, and he murdered a taskmaster. Even after he responded to grace, Moses went back and forth. Moses said, I am a Jew, and I am raised in the land of luxury. I am a Jew, and I am living inside the kingdom of Egypt. Let me see what my brother's life is really like. And this is the grace of God moving Moses. And so he chose of his own free will to live like a slave. And in this, Moses showed the heart of God the Son, who chose of his own free will to live like a slave. But Moses was not God. Moses was just a man, and he was a sinner. He was not yet a saint. But he had something good in his heart. He said, I am a Jew, but I'm not suffering like the other Jews. I am a Jew, but I'm raised in the lap of luxury, and everything is wonderful for me. I live in the house of Pharaoh himself. I am going to go and live as a slave. I'm going to disguise myself, and I'm going to go and live as a slave, and I'm going to make bricks and mortar and be a slave like my fellow Jews. And so he did. But then his hot temper got the best of him. And he saw a taskmaster beating the Jews and beating the Jews. He got him alone, and he murdered him. He did not kill him in self-defense. He just plain murdered him. And he thought he did a good job in his murder. He secretly pulled aside the taskmaster. He killed him in private without any witnesses. And he thought he had committed the perfect murder. And he was very proud of himself. Several days after the murder, Moses the murderer, several days afterwards, what happened? Moses was fighting with a fellow Jew. He got his hot temper came up again. And the fellow Jew said, are you going to murder me like you did the taskmaster? And then the very brave and strong Moses became terrified. If you witness the murder, if you know about the murder, maybe the Egyptians will find out about the murder. And in terror and in fear, he ran away as a coward. Is this the stuff that heroes are made of? What are heroes made of? They're made of the grace of God being poured into a weak soul. They're made of the love of God being poured where he wishes to pour it. And the love of God is found in every age. And the love of God is found in every family. And the love of God is found in every circumstance. And the love of God can be poured anywhere and everywhere. What is one of the great sins of the society of St. Pius X? We are the sons of Archbishop Lefebvre. I have a true son of Archbishop Lefebvre. We are the sons of Archbishop Lefebvre. We live in a very holy family. Does that mean we will all be saints? Does that mean we will all be saints? Does that mean we will all be saints? Who lived in a better family than Judas? Who could have better brothers than Judas? Who could have a better father than Judas? Who could have had a closer contact with God than Judas? No one. But he was still Judas. It is not enough to be raised in perfect circumstances. What is required is the grace of God. And families must recognize this. Many times a father cannot get into his wife to do what she should do as a Catholic mother. And many times a wife cannot get her husband to do what he should do as a Catholic father. And many times they can't do what they, can, what they would like to do themselves. What do you do? Fall back upon the power of the grace of God. Moses was drawn out of water. The water of sin, the water of death, the water of destruction, the water of bad example, the water of a terrible family in which he was raised. He was born in a wonderful family. He was raised in a terrible family. But who won the war? He had both sparks in his heart 
Moses had both families in his heart. He liked the party life of the Egyptians. He liked the, the many of the ways of the Egyptians, but he still remembered that he was a Jew. And he had both, his heart was torn apart. And sometimes he was moved by God. Now I'm going to live with my fellow Jews, and I'm going to work with them. And sometimes he was moved by Satan. I'm going to murder the he who makes me angry. And even when he went off in the land of, 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 of uh, to, to be to be in Midian in order to marry, he did not circumcise his own children. Forty years lived in the desert. Forty years he was a lax Catholic. Forty years, he wasn't the kind of Catholic he should be. He wasn't the kind of Jew he should be. He didn't even circumcise his own sons. But he still believed. He had a mix inside of himself. One day, he saw a burning bush, and everything changed. Had not his mother put him in a basket to save him. Had not even raised in Egypt. Had he not had all the circumstances that came to him, he would not have been there that day in order to find that burning bush. So we must recognize here, God is God in every age and every circumstance, and children, children are the answer to the crisis in the church. They are the answer to the crisis in our world. Satan is promoting abortion. Satan is promoting birth control. Satan is trying to stop marriages, not only of those who are wicked. I remember as a child, some men older than me. And they saw the world in the 1970s and 80s. And I remember young men. When I was about 10 years old, they were 18, 20 years old. I'm not going to get married today. Look at this. All the women are getting divorced. My own family is a mess. You know, they're not perfect. I'm going to find a perfect girl. There's going to be no problems, any problems. Forget it. And now, several of these men that I know, they're now 60 years old. They're now 70 years old, and they're still breathing. I don't know why, but they are. They're still breathing. And they never got a bad wife. And they never got a bad husband. And they're useless. Because they saw the world around them was too bad in the 70s. I remember as a child in the 70s, like today in 2021. Can it get worse? We got satanic Nancy Pelosi, we got satanic Joe Biden, if you can remember the words we saying today. We got all the different wickednesses going on in the world today. We've got the destruction of our faith, the destruction of our world all around us. We have abortion everywhere. We have them trying to force these wicked vaccines down our throat, which is just one of many wicked things to come. It's just a beginning. Remember they said, there's only been a few weeks of the, the, the pandemic. And then it turned out to be months, and now it's going to be years. And they said, you're going to have to take a vaccine, but now you're going to take the second one after 21 days. In case you survive the first one, you're going to be sick and die after the second one. And then if you survive the second one, now what Bill Gates says, you're going to get a little computer chart on your computer that's going to say green, amber, and red. Chinese have already put it in the practice. Green means you're up to date in your, in your vaccines. But after a time, you have to be vaccinated again. It'll go to amber. It'll go to yellow light. And that'll mean you now have to get revaccinated. And if you don't get vaccinated, it goes to red. When it goes to red, you can't do things that are unsafe, like go shopping for groceries. Uh, you can't do things that are unsafe, like go to work when other people are there. And you have to stay in your house until you die of starvation. Or get the next vaccine. They've already announced this. This first vaccine is only the beginning of hell. And there will be more things than that. But what was the safety of Joseph? He couldn't, he didn't have a sword. What was the safety of the Blessed Virgin Mary? And that little child, as they're on the way to what place? Egypt. Where they worship Satan. Where they are the enemies of God. And when he looked back to the Holy Land, they're trying to kill the child. It doesn't look like a bright future for that little baby. It doesn't look like a good time to raise a family. But this child will survive Egypt. And this child will survive the wickedness of the ones that tried to kill him. And remember what the scripture says. One day an angel came and appeared to Joseph. Seven years after that fleeing, according to tradition. And the angel appeared to Joseph and said, 
Those who sought the life of the child are all dead. Don't forget that. We mentioned a few weeks ago. They're all dead. Nancy Pelosi is already dead, eating little babies. She's drinking as a breakfast, lunch, and dinner foods. 80 something years old. The enemies of God, they are going to be dead. They are not going to live forever. They will die. And when they die, there will be a coming back to the Holy Land. And when Joseph and Mary and that child came back to the Holy Land, what about the house they left seven years before? Someone else lived in it. What about the carpenter business that Joseph ran? Someone else was working with his tools, and someone else had it. And they were in abject poverty when they returned back to their home, and their house was being lived in by someone else. Could they afford a child? Could they afford to have a family? They couldn't afford to have a child. They couldn't afford to have a family. But this is the time when saints are born. This is the time when saviors are born. This is the time when those that are going to transform the world and be great warriors against the Antichrist and defeat the kingdom of Satan, this is the time they are born. And Satan is petrified of them. And that is the reason why he tells you you can't afford another child. That's why he tells you you can't have to abort the baby that you have. That's why he tells you you're not worthy of being a good mother. You're not worthy of being a good father. You're not. You're not good enough to be a father. Don't marry a girl if she's not perfect. Don't marry a guy if he's not perfect. This is foolishness. We need children. Children don't need to be raised in an expensive house. They don't need to be raised in the most perfect of circumstances. All of our ancestors, once upon a time, at some point they were the enemies of God, but they had children and these children were converted to God. They became the saints of the last 2,000 years in our church. St. Francis Xavier came to India. He didn't tell them, don't have children because you don't have all the right faith. You have children, and the grace of God will convert you through your children. Children are the means of the conversion of parents. Children are the means of the preservation and continuation of the, of, of the faith from one generation to another. And there will be children who are not of this fold that shall be made of this fold. There will be children who are now Protestants, children that are now atheists and pagans, children that are now in all manner of wicked families and circumstances, who shall be brought by our Lord Jesus Christ and called to the one fold and one shepherd of our Holy Roman Catholic Church and the one shepherd of our Lord Jesus Christ. And they're going to be called together, and there's going to be an army, an army of souls in love of God, an army of souls that are going to spread the holy faith. And this army is going to defeat Satan. And this army will be found inside of the family. Today is the feast of the holy family. And the holy family was not in the most perfect of circumstances. And the great family of Moses was not in the most perfect of circumstances. But God still made Moses. And Moses also remember when God came to Moses, he said, Moses, I want you to free my Jewish people. And Moses, the hot-tempered man that he was, and the belligerent and proud man that he was, said, you may be God, but I'm not doing it. I'm not going to go. You will need to find someone else. I don't want to deal with the headaches. No, you must go. And finally, 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 was it all bad that Moses was a complainer? God chose a complainer. And why did he choose a complainer? Because he wanted Moses to make the final complaint, which is the foundation of our holy priesthoods. Remember 2,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago, Moses' great-grandfather and our great-grandfather, what is the first history of his life? His name is Adam, and he was in the state of sanctifying grace. What did he do? He came to God and he complained. God made a beautiful, perfect world. And Adam said, look, I know it's a nice world, but I want someone like me. I want someone like me to share my life with, and I don't see anyone like me. Adam complains. God said, it is not good for man to be alone. <clears throat> And about 2,400 years later, 
Moses, the grandson of Adam, was not so different than Adam. God wanted him to complain. His first complaints were bad complaints. He shouldn't have made it. But he was waiting for that last sacred complaint where Moses said to God, I stutter. You're telling me to go to the Jews, to the Egyptians, and say, let my people go, and I stutter. I can't even say the words without stuttering. And then God said, all right, Moses, I will send your brother Aaron with you, and he will speak on your behalf. He will hold the staff, and he will say the words. But he will only say the words you tell him to say. He will only hold the staff when you hold him to tell him to hold it. And Aaron is the father of our priesthood. When I was consecrated to bishop, in the formula of the consecration it says, whatever the sacredness is of those vestments of Aaron that God made for Aaron the high priest, let them be in this priest. The spirit of Aaron is in the bishops of the New Testament. The vestments of Aaron are in the priests of the New Testament. And Aaron, what did he do? He also made a mistake and made a golden calf. But God wanted Aaron to be the priest. God wanted Aaron to be the mouthpiece of Moses. And God wants us to be the mouthpiece of him. It wasn't all bad. And so Moses was raised in abject circumstances and difficult circumstances. But the mixtures of what happened in his heart caused him in the end to say the right thing, cause him the end to make the right choice. And the devil knows, no matter how wicked a child is raised, that child can still become a saint. That child can still become Saul of Tarsus. That child can still become Moses. That child can still become St. Augustine. That child can still become St. Francis Xavier, who started his life very badly, or St. Mary Magdalene. That child can become a saint, and a saint that destroys the kingdom of hell. Therefore, the devil hates children, the devil hates marriage, and the devil tries to find a way. The world's too bad. The situation in the world is too difficult. Don't get married now. Don't have children now. Don't raise them now. You don't know how you're going to stop the vaccines. How are you going to stop the wicked laws? How are you going to escape the deep states? Did the Blessed Virgin Mary have a plan to escape Egypt? Did St. Joseph have a plan to escape, to, escape, to escape Israel? The angel came in the night and said, time to move. There was no warning. He came in the night and said, it's time to move. And imagine that kind of conversation between St. Joseph and St. Virgin Mary, but she did not know that it was time to move. And St. Joseph came to his, to his wife and said, I, we're going to move now. Where are we moving? To Egypt. When should we go? How about right now? Okay. Might as well. You're the husband. Let's go. She didn't ask him why they were moving at midnight, two o'clock in the morning. He wanted to move at two o'clock in the morning, so let's move. And they walked to Egypt. And then seven years later, they were finally settled in. We woke her up again. We're going back to Israel. We're going back to Nazareth. Okay, let's go back to Nazareth. She was a woman. She saw all the problems. Where's our house? What are our circumstances? And she didn't know the answer. Remember what the scripture says. She pondered these things in her heart. The mother of God didn't know the answer. The mother of God didn't know why they had to go to Egypt. Why they had to leave Egypt and go back to Nazareth. Why the child had to be gone for three days. Thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. She's the mother of God. And she didn't understand everything there's to understand about children. She didn't know everything about the divine plan, but she had great confidence, infinite confidence. She had total confidence in God, and she never questioned God, and she took care of that child whom she could never fully understand. Do you not know it was about my father's business? She could not understand, but she pondered these things in her heart. We must understand our present circumstances. Keep your faith. Don't be afraid of losing your job. Don't be afraid of losing your house. Don't be afraid of losing the things that are of this world. God will give us better things. And we shall make it through to the very end. So long as we love God, love His holy family, love the circumstances in which He put our family. Lord Jesus.
Jesus Christ is able to visit the land of Moses. He was able to come back. He was able to see the world. He was able to visit the land where his people had been. And then he was better to be the savior of mankind. And he grew in grace before God and man. Many heretics have attacked this passage of scripture. That since he's God, how can he grow in grace? God can't grow in grace. Much visited cast in scripture by heretics. He grew in grace before God and man. God does not grow in grace. But Jesus Christ is a real man. Even though he has divinity inside of him, when we say he's God, he's a real man. And in his humanity, he can grow in grace. And then they attacked him in our study of the theology of the knowledge of God. How can he grow in understanding? He's God. And we say he did not grow in his knowledge that we call his theoretical knowledge. But he could grow in his experimental knowledge. He could grow in his experience as a man. He could experience more things as a man and grow in experimental knowledge, in experiential knowledge. He could not grow in the knowledge of prophecy. He could not grow in the knowledge of God who he sees face to face always in his humanity. But he could grow in experimental knowledge and the experiential knowledge. He could grow in grace. And he did grow in grace. And he did grow in experiential knowledge. And where did he grow in grace? Raised by Joseph and Mary. Is there any father worthy of a child? Is there any mother worthy of a child? The child is always worth more. How can God make man learn from Joseph? How can God make man learn from Mary? How can he grow in grace inside of this holy family since he is the source of all grace? As God he cannot, but in his childhood, in his humanity, he grows. And all Catholic fathers and mothers recognize, no matter how smart you are in the faith, or how weak you are in the faith, no matter how good you are or how bad you are, it doesn't really matter. You're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not holy enough. You're not worthy enough to be a mother or a father of a child. But the grace of God is worth more. And the grace of God is more powerful. And you can be the mother and father of a child, even in our most wicked age. And they can be turned into saints. And where the weakness is of mommy, let the strength be put in God. And where the weakness is of the Father, let the strength be put in God. And there shall become saints of every age, including the next one, and including our age. These saints all come from holy families. Including those who all, and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost.